Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we're gonna to build the ultimate PS5 Pro controller. We're gonna take our regular DualSense controller and we're gonna change everything from it. This is gonna be a little different video. It's gonna be much longer obviously because I wanna make sure that I show all the details on how to do this process. Now, to get this started, I don't even know if it's possible to do this or if I have the capacity to do this, but I guess we're gonna find out as we go. We're going to be using this red controller and as you can see this left analog stick is busted and it has a heavy drift. But that's alright because we're going to try to solve this problem by installing these Hall Effect joysticks. And if you don't know what the Hall Effect joysticks are, they're basically type of joysticks that use magnets instead of resistance to position the joystick. And since there's no contact with the magnet joysticks, there is no drift. This will be the first step of the process to install these Hall Effects. And I think this will be the hardest part because if we can't install these Hall Effect joysticks, then the controller will not work. Or if it's not centered, there's no point to build the rest of the controller. We're gonna be installing a brand new faceplate on the controller. So it's gonna look something like this. A black matte finish trim. Now a Pro Controller, isn't really a pro controller without some back paddles. So we're gonna install four back paddles. We're gonna take all these buttons out and we're gonna replace them with a new custom buttons. We're gonna install some hair triggers. So our stoppers here are gonna be very short distance. We're gonna put some LED lights on here on this touch pad. We're also gonna install new thumb pads which are swappable for different lengths. As you can see from the packaging, all of the accessories to customize this controller are from Extreme Rate. And if you're interested in any of these parts, I'm gonna link all of them down below. Now to take note, I'm gonna be doing this uh, modification on a BDM02, I think this is a 02 or 010 controller. And in order to tell which generation controller you have, you could just look at this chart and you could see if you lift the trigger. Most likely if there's a spring, it's a 030 or a 040. And again, the one I'm using, the 010 and the 020, they don't have that spring. The first part is to remove the analog sticks and replace them with the Hall Effects. So let's get into it. So we're just gonna take this apart, get the motherboard out, and then we're gonna get our soldering iron and start soldering this up. Just remove all these ribbon cables. I wanna get this board out of this shell. Just like that. Once we take the controller apart, we're gonna need a soldering iron and other soldering equipment to take out the potentiometer joystick modules. So what I would recommend is for you guys to have a tip cleaner, a tip tinner. This will allow your tip to always be nice and fresh to get that new that soldering on point we're going to need some of this fast chip smd remover oil and this will help a lot with the removing of the joystick modules we're going to need a solder sucker this will help us to get all the excess solder out flux paste paste this helps with the soldering and i use a 0.3 millimeter soldering wire for this project also gonna need a soldering wick and a helping hand here where we could hold our motherboard. I realized with that red controller, there's an issue with that motherboard. So I wanna make sure that we have a full function controller for this project. So I'm just gonna use a 010 white controller. So as we can see on the motherboard, this is a BDM 010 controller. So the next step is to get this motherboard out of this housing. So we're just gonna desolder these wires here. So black goes on the top, we just want to remember that part when we put it back together. So at this point we're going to put this SMD remover oil on here 
and this will help melt the solder and melt those pins so it's easier to remove this joystick. I've done this a few times now, so hopefully now I have the gist of it. I'm by no means any professional here or engineer or any type of technician. I'm just a gamer that picked up a few things on Amazon and started doing stuff. There's been a lot of comments saying, oh, you need to learn how to solder, you need to do all this stuff. I mean, I do, uh, and I'm learning as I go. <laughs> Now this stuff melts very easy. We don't want to put too much because the problem I had before when I put too much of it, later we're going to have to clean all this. And there's a lot of it. It's going to be harder to clean at all. Now we're going to take the heat gun. So when you're doing this, you want your heat gun to be around 700 to 750 degrees. And I'm usually heating it up for anywhere from one to two minutes. So one is out. these pins came out so that's good so now we're gonna go ahead and clean all this up we, we want to get all of the solder out so the holes are empty I'm gonna be using a wick to clean as well as a solder sucker this takes a lot of patience and you have to be very careful so don't try to take any shortcuts because so many things can go wrong and if something can go wrong if you take shortcuts it will go wrong So the best way to do this is once you're melting the solder, almost at the same time, you have to put the sucker in there and create, create the suction. If you even one or two seconds after the solder will freeze, See, that, that, that suction wasn't good. This is a better suction. Yeah. We cleaned the board with all the holes except for one over here and I wasn't able to clean it out. I think there might be something stuck there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to heat this up and then put the joystick module inside. Yep, there it goes. So that went in perfect.
So now we have all of our pins. So now we just need to solder this on. So this is how it came out, hopefully it gets the job done. Okay, so it's looking okay, my computer is a little frozen. So it's a little bit off-centered, as you could see on the computer, but I think it's okay because it's not too bad. These There's little holes here that we could do that, I'm just going to find something to adjust it with and we're going to see if we could calibrate it to the center and then move forward. So for whatever unknown reason, this board stopped working. While I was trying to configure it, it just turned off on me and I couldn't get it to work. So, so I got another board, similar one, BDM010. I did the same exact thing to this. And we're going to see if we could configure this and hopefully this is, doesn't break down. Much difficult than I thought this would be. But at least we have it working, so that's a plus. So we got it lined up, now we just have to crank it upwards. Up, it doesn't want to go. Okay, almost. Come on, guy. Just need to take you up a little bit more, and we got you. Okay. Okay, so this one looks like centered, right? I don't know what's going on, my computer delayed. Okay, let's work on the next one. Okay, I think we got it now. Let's see here. After some time of playing around, I think we got them centered. We finally got the Hall Effect joystick centered on our board. That was probably the hardest part of the whole project. Now we can move forward on the process of building our ultimate Pro Controller. So for this next part, we're gonna install our clicky triggers. So we're just gonna take this out here.
you want to cut these so the adaptive triggers are disabled just tuck that in there there's four screws here we take off to open up the trigger mechanism I'm just going to take this out this out this as well so for the BDM 010 we're going to be using these and these so we can take out this one one and two and these two one and two so we're going to take our R2 trigger and slide this in just like that So we're going to take this one from our clicky hair trigger kit. Just like that. Now we take our trigger. Looking good so far. We want to have these little claws sticking out. So it hits these ridges here. Now we could put this together. Okay. And now we're going to do the same exact thing on the other side. Once we have both of our triggers, we could put these aside. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take our old shell here, our case, and take our new one. And we're going to swamp everything from here to here. Since we have our own buttons, we're going to use the new buttons so we could just put these ones aside for now. But we will need this. We're going to take our new rings that came with this shell these on So for the LED strip, it's fairly easy. Then we have to decide which color we want. Well, this theme should be blue. 
we're supposed to take this and supposedly it's supposed to peel off and with the LED strip we're just going to take it and put it on this case in here now we want to get this part removed so we have to heat it up with a heat gun So at this point, we want to put back our triggers. Bring our new shell in. And now we could place this right inside. And screw some more screws here. Wow, that looks so nice. So now we're gonna solder this board back here. And before we do that, we're gonna take our new thumb pads. Once the board is here, we could go ahead and solder this back. We're gonna cut away the zero two zero and leave the zero one zero since this is the zero one zero controller. Battery plate back. Now I skip doing the L3, R3, just a little more work that's unnecessary because I don't map those buttons. So a little extra step I like to do here. Put some electric tape. That's what it's looking so far. Now just assemble the last part here.
last part is we're going to take these little caps here put it on our triggers on top and this one So it's been some time now building this controller. Now is the moment of truth to finally to test it out and to see if all this hard work has paid off and it actually works. Since we tested the Hall effects, I haven't tested the controller yet. So I'm really hoping everything turns out great. So let's check it out right now. I'll turn my computer on here. Let's plug her in. Power buttons on. Joysticks working here. Okay, so these buttons, everything is working. Click your fingers working. Let's see if we could map these buttons. So this is turned on. And I like to map like this here. So buttons are mapped, back buttons are working. So everything seems like it's good. I'm so stoked that everything turned out on my first try. Well, the Hall effects took me two times because as I mentioned, the first board for whatever reason just stopped working. I had to take another board and redo everything and recalibrate the joysticks. Everything turned out great. We have the clicky hair triggers. Then we have the back buttons. We have the swappable joysticks. Let's add up and see how much all of this costs. This turned out better than I expected. I'm gonna take some time and go enjoy it and play some games with it. And I'll get back to you guys later. First game I dropped into, I got nine kills. I think we finished second. Second game, I switched up the joysticks. I put the smaller one with the control freak on top. Get a, ended up getting 11 kills with a dub. This controller, I would say, definitely competes with something like the Scuff, which I recently just reviewed. And if you're looking for the parts that I used for this controller, I'm also going to leave it in the description. And you could also visit extremerate.com. And if you use the promo code gamer 2 know you'll get an additional 10% off. And if you stay to the end, I gotta say thank you for watching the full video on the link. It means a lot to me. I hope you enjoyed the process of building this exciting controller that I cannot wait to go back and start using. I challenge you to do the same and let me know how it turned out.